Okay guys, here we got the Doomtown um, mat or the cardboard that comes in the box set. You get two. Um, here you have how to form a posse, um, when they can join and stuff. Here is the jobs. And this is very important right here, is oh. the hand ranks. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Um, in this game, you're going to have your... How, um, your headquarters is called home right in the middle so I will be having here the law dogs and I'm the Sloan gang and he's the Sloan gang um, whenever you play deeds they'll be going next to here so the first two deeds go here then they go here and they keep on going um, this is the town square it's gonna be all this area here this is no man's land so um, one of the I won't say difficult, but um, one of the challenging things to concept to to grasp is the movement. Okay, when you have this nice half this playmat that comes in with the game, you have these arrows, and they help a lot. These arrows state that if you're moving from this location to here, it does not boot your character. Um, booting is tapping. Okay, um, so if Philip Swineford wants to move to Town Square, it does not boot him. If he wanted to move to the deed right next to here, it won't boot him, or here, it won't boot him. If I want to move to this deed over here, it will boot him. Okay, um, yeah, same thing as over here. Um, also, if you notice that from Town Square, there's these little arrows. Meaning is once say I take a turn to move Phillips to Town Square and then from Town Square he wants to move to any of my deeds, he can. And it'll be without booting. That also goes for out here to one of my, my deeds, deeds as well. Without booting. But if he does from here wants to go back home, it will boot him. Home is the only thing that from Town Square will boot to go back home. Okay? Um, you will say, hey, what's the big issue with booting or nothing? You can keep on moving with a character as long as he's not booted. Mm. So I could move here one turn, next turn move here, or next turn move somewhere else. Okay? So it keeps that guy like, active in the game. There's also a lot of abilities that require you to boot somebody. So having them not booted available for that ability is also really crucial. Yeah. So on your house card, or I keep saying house card because some um, of the game, game home, of Thrones, your home your, card, your home card um, it'll tell you a number to your bottom left. That's how much initial uh, in ghost game. rocks you have. Um, when you play in a game, you reveal your house card. I keep saying house card, your home card. <laughs> I mean, the opponent reveals their home card, and you will then know, say, oh, I'm playing the Sloan game. Then you're going to go through your deck and pick out up to five dudes. That's how much money you have to spend for those five dudes. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, I got Phillips, Travis, Prescott, and Tommy. They cost, and if the bottom left corner, there's a cost. So that's five, ten, twelve, fifteen. So that's 15, and I left four left. I could use this four to get a fifth dude, but then I will start with no money to play cards, so I kind of want to have some cushion. Josh um, there started with... I have Clint Ramsey, Ailey Hensman, Lawrence Blackwood, and Clementine Lip, which uh, gives me 5, 10, 13 credits. I only have 18 starting off, but that leaves me with five ghost rock left over Ever. and then the bottom right there's a plus three um, that means that at the beginning of our turns we're gonna get three gross rock okay so that will give me a, a initial stash of seven alternatively uh, some of the do uh, characters uh, dudes in the game have just a number not a positive 
next to it, that represents upkeep. Yeah, the bottom right. Or bottom right, excuse me, yes. That means that the after you collect your plus three, during the upkeep, you have to pay that much to keep that guy in the play. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then he leaves your pot, he leaves your gang or group. So, um, and like I was telling you in the previous video, uh, video, there's your influence, the red poker chips, and um, you're gonna have locations. And if you also notice with the with the blue chip, every single one of these dudes are spades. Yes. All of spades are going to be dudes. Um, diamonds are going to be deeds. Hearts are going to be attachments. And clubs are plays, which are essentially your action cards. Actions, yeah. Events. Events. Or operations of the Bayonet Runner. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go through a sequence of play and explain you how to play as, as it goes. So once you have your four guys, he has four or five guys, mm -hmm. then... We draw up to five cards. Yep. Okay, and that's your your play hand. Okay, this is what you're gonna be playing from. Your hand size is always five. So, um, yeah, Josh is. <laughs> um, once you get your your play hand, you're gonna put that aside. Then, at the beginning of each game, we play a poker hand of low ball. Um, if you know what low ball is, is you know, it's a poker hand in which the lowest um, the uh, worst hand the wins. The worst hand wins, yeah. And you have to bid one ghost rock. So, so we're going to ante up. Ante up. Then we're going to take our, our cards and reveal them. So, as the law dogs, I have an ace of spades. Uh, no, wait. Ace of clubs. Ten of spades, ace of diamonds, eight of clubs, and three of hearts. So I have a pair of aces. I have a five of hearts, four of spades, four of spades, a jack of diamonds, and a six of diamonds. So I have a pair of uh, fours, which okay. is cheating though. I have a pair of aces. Aces in this game is low, so they're ones. But Josh just revealed a cheating hand. I have a guy here called, um, a dude, named Philip Swineford. It says, each time a player reveals a cheating hand and your hand is legal, which mine is because I have nothing there repeated, um, you may discard a card from your, from your uh, play hand. Play hand is your, your five card hand or whatever hand you have that you play cards from. Um, and draw a card. So if you noticed, these are very good cards. He's very expensive. He's nine to play. I'm not be playing this guy anytime soon. So I will trigger Phillips to discard Sheriff Dave out of my hand. Yeah, draw... Sheriff's dead. <laughs> um, he's not dead. He's, he's discarded. Out, he's out of town. Um, in this game, you're gonna be going through your deck a lot. Um, eventually, you're going to be decking yourself. Once that happens, you take your discard pile, you shuffle it, and it turns back in your deck. So you're always recycling the cards. Um, so when you discard a card, it symbolizes the guy's out of town. He's doing something. So yeah. He's a bit busy. So I draw a card for that pretty good card. Um, so now I'm done activating any abilities. Yeah, I don't I, have yeah. anything, unfortunately. So, this play hand of five goes on your discard pile. So, Jesus won the low ball there, so he gets to take my credit, or my ghost rock, and his, use it for himself this turn. I'm using his gold uh, ghost rock for the good, after he stole it from the poor people. We'll see about that. <laughs> okay, also that determines that I am the first player throughout this whole um, turn. Um, and then next turn we'll do another low ball, and then we we'll determine for that mm -hmm. turn who it is. Yeah. So, all right, law dog, what are you gonna do first? I will spend in this game. I will do an action. Josh will do a jo action. Then I do an action, and Josh does an action. So we go back and forth. So my first action is I'm gonna pay a f 
one ghost rock and I'm gonna get a pair of six shooters um, it's an attachment since you can tell it's a heart it's a weapon it says cheating resolution boot one card in your draw hand changes to a suit and value of your choice so since we know that the Sloan Gangs are a bunch of cheaters, um, I'm going to put that on Tommy Harden. So, I don't know about that. And I will pass. Well, that was your action. Yes. Lawrence Blackwood's going to come into town. Okay. So, Lawrence moves to the town square. From here, he has position to move anywhere he wants without booting. That is a little troubling <laughs> for me because um, control of the town square is very, very s crucial for movement. Mm -hmm. So, it is my turn. Oh, also, I forgot. Uh, um, all these dudes that are down here off the bat, they're on your home. So, that's yeah. just uh, they're all in headquarters. So, I am going to spend two, and I'm going to play a general store. Um, right now, it gives me one control point, but Josh has one, two, three influence. So, I'm in no threat, threat of um, winning the game. So, I still got a long way to go. Um, the general store gives me one control point. It's a private, so it's a private location, so if there's a shootout that happens in here, then people, people who are not a part of that uh, gang will get a uh, bounty. They get a bounty increase. And it says, controller, noon, boot, attach goods or spells, reducing the cost of the card by two ghost rocks. I can't immediately use it because it's a noon action, so I have to now pass my turn to Josh and on my next turn I can use this so I uh, my turn was playing the general store you're up Josh well what we're gonna do here is Lawrence wants a part of that their general store which actually gives me a control point thanks oh no no never mind not, not, not yet yes you do so uh, now Lawrence went into my private general store and he is being bossy to my poor little workers in there. It happens. Um, so now, technically, Josh is the controller of this location now. I still own it, but he went in and he's bullying. He's taking over my general store. Um, so now Josh has one control point, but I still have uh, two control points here. And then Pre Prescott is technically four. Influence uh, points. Yeah. So I am no threat of losing the game right now, but I do want to use that ability. But now it says controller noon, so now the controller is Josh. So if I don't do nothing about it, now Josh, next turn, he can tap this location and use the ability. Um, so I have to do something about this. So as officer of the law, <laughs> I have to, I'm going to move Tommy Pre um, Harden from town, from my home, to over here. And if you notice, since these two deeds are adjacent to home, to home and you see the little green arrows, that means I can move a guy from here to here without booting. So I move Tom Harden over to the uh, general store. So, so now he has control over his uh, general store. Now, again. since I have one influence, he has one influence, it's tied. A tied goes to the owner of the deed, which is me. So now I get control back over the general store. All right. Well, despite you having a representative of the law there, I'm going to play. This is a holdup. So what I got to do here is I boot Mr. Lawrence because he's not at a deed I own so I'm gonna take a ghost stone from you because that's how much that produces okay the card says boot your dude at a deed you do not own to take ghost rocks from the owner up to the production 
of that deed. Raise the bounty on your dude by the amount or gross route taken. So if you notice the bottom right corner of, of the general store, it produces one income for me. Um, so he is going to take that one income for him. Mm -hmm. And then by the amount he takes, he's how much he's now a wanted dude. Yep. Um, that is very ballsy. <laughs> Since there's an officer of the law, we're, we're a Sloan. We in this general store. We don't care for your kind. You know, even though you hear the the bells ding, 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 opening, and you see a sheriff walking in. But you, you see, the thing is, I got away with it. <laughs> oh, we'll see about that. Um, so now it's my turn. Uh, I'm not very happy that uh, you know Lawrence here stole my store. So. Um, it's my turn. I now control this location because, again, this tied. So tied goes to the controller. I am going to boot this location, where it says boot, to attach Blue Tick, my trusty little dog, to Tommy Harden. Um, and it reduces the cost by two. So it costs me for free. Um, and the Blue Tick is a sidekick. Um, and it, um, when it comes to casualties, he can be discarded, and I'll explain what that is later. His ability says, boot, noon boot, move this dude to the same location as a wanted dog, a wanted uh, dude. So, Lawrence is wanted, and if Lawrence managed to get out of this town unscathed, <laughs> out of the general store, I could then hunt him down with Blue Tick. Blue Tick, you know. He knows how you smell, which is bad. <laughs> so that's my action. You're up, Josh. Well, I'm no coward or nothing, but I know my odds when I see it. That is a fairly beefy dude over there, and now he has a dog. <laughs> um, and Lawrence, since he booted, he cannot move. He's stuck here until the next turn. So because to move, you have to be unbooted so he cannot move he's stuck in the general store so so I have him cornered in the general store or perhaps I have you cornered in your general store <laughs> I'm gonna play bad company on mr. Lawrence there which is a noon action I choose a wanted dude that dude gets plus three bullets and is a stud so now uh, I also he also, if he gets discarded or aced, um, the, I get extra the person gets four Let's put extra that card next down. by so we know sure. whether he gets the plus three. Um, okay, this is, I guess this is a good time to explain what uh, draw and stud means. Yeah. Okay, whenever you a shootout happens, if you have a draw and they're known by the bronze bullets, those in a number... That means is, once you draw your your five hand of poker, you get to discard cards from that hand up to the number of, uh, in that bullet. So, he before bad company, he was a one um, stud. No um, draw. So he would draw five cards. This can discard one and then redraw up to five. Okay. If he was a stud, studs are silver bullets like. Tommy Harden is here. Studs get you to draw extra cards, and then once you build your poker hand, then you discard whatever is over. So with uh, Tommy Harden, I'll be drawing six cards, make the best poker hand out of five, and discard one. Okay? So now with Bad Company, he becomes a four bullet and turns into a stud. That means Lawrence, when he goes on a shootout, he's going to be drawing nine cards and building the best five poker hand, which is very, very strong. Powerful. <laughs> okay. Um, right now, uh, it's my turn. Yes. I will. I could call out Lawrence for a shootout, but I think Lawrence will kind of. Um, have his way with Tommy, so um, I want to see what Josh is going to do, so I will pass. All right. Well, 
as much as I think Lawrence could handle himself over there, but he's booted, so I can't call out the copper myself. So I'm going to get Mr. Silas Ames out on the field, and he cost me two. And uh, Silas's bullets is equal to his bounty. So we'll see how that works out. Okay. Um, Silas doesn't scare me that much right now. I still think I need to see what Josh is. Because Josh has a lot of dudes, and I want to see where they're going. So um, I'm going to pass again. All right. Silas is now going to walk in the middle of town. So, see what the law dog's going to do about that. So if you notice the green arrow, so he can move from his home to the to the doom town square without booting. Um, I'm thinking Josh is going to go to the general store to give some backup and to use Silas to call out Tommy. That's what I'm thinking he's going to do. So I am going to pass. And you're indeed right. We're going to get those law dog coppers. So we have Silas and Lawrence. Silas just shows up in the... There's a Mexican standoff in... <laughs> no Mexicans. No Mexicans. In the general store between Lawrence and Tommy. And then Silas, you know, wants to just butt in. Um, I will now move um, from my hometown, since it's a green arrow, to... The general store. Tommy now needs some help. <laughs> so Travis is going to go uh, get some backup to Tommy. Now it's uh, Josh's turn. Well, I don't care if you brought over one person or 27. <laughs> Silas is calling out Mr. Tommy. So as his action, if he has an unbooted dude, which he does, he can make a call out that says... This town is not big enough for me and Tommy. One of <laughs> us has to go. So, me as officer of the law, <laughs> I will accept your challenge. So, at this mo moment, the Josh forms his posse. Uh, which will be, has to include Silas. Since he's at the call out. Lawrence is also going to join him since he's there. Since he's there. Um. When you form a posse, any person from an adjacent location can join in the posse. They have to boot to do so. so. They have to boot to do so. So if Josh had more guys in Town Square, since Town Square, the little arrow, is adjacent to this location, they could boot to join the po the posse. Um, so technically, I could have Phillips and Prescott. They are adjacent, since they're adjacent to my home, this location. They could boot in to join the posse. I don't want to do that for two reasons. Uh, for one reason, mainly for one reason, is if I do join this, and for some reason I have a bad hand, I can lose a lot of dudes. And I don't want that. Because if I do move them here, and Josh managed to get a very good hand, and Ace, I'll, if these two get killed, I lose the game. So, I want to keep that's one, two, three influence here to keep him in check because even if I bring one out, okay, and Josh managed to kill these guys, all he has to do is play a deed that gives him at least one in one or two influence and he could win the game. So I want to keep Philip and Prescott in town in the in my sheriff hometown. I can keep in the peace in the rest of the town, you know. Yeah. Travis and Tommy should should have this covered. Yeah, let's let's keep this amongst men, shall we? <laughs> so, um, t I have to include Tommy in the shootout because he's the one that got called out, and then Travis is going to join the shootout. So this is going to be my posse against this posse right here. Um, then Josh has to pick a leader. Uh, My leader is going to be Lawrence because Lawrence, uh, he's my shooter. 
He he's the wanted guy. So Tommy will be my, sh my my shooter. And now we have a phase called the shootout phase. So we get to play cards. Um, there'll be cards that say shootout. They're going to be fat if they're going to be a shootout. It's going to happen. Um, I have initiative, so I got first player, so I get to play first. Yep. Um, I'm going to play pistol whip. It says shootout. Boot your dude in this posse to send a dude in the other posse home booted. Your dude gets a minus one bullets. So, Travis Moore, Travis is going to boot to pistol whip Lawrence. Well, that's not very nice. So, while Lawrence has his back on the door, Travis sneaks in, opens the door, and wham! Pistol whips. We Lawrence. said something about, you know, that, that criminals being the cheaters and stuff. That's not cheating. I'm defending oh. my location. Um, because a shootout was called here, yes. actually, each of the guys who are not, uh, since I don't own That's that right. location, you gain my, a bounty. my bounty gets increased. So, got so I am done for that shootout. Oh. Uh, shoot off actions. You you have a uh, chance of shoot off actions. Unfortunately, there's not much that I could do. Really. So now we're gonna go to the shootout. So Josh has one stud, one draw. Mm -hmm. So he gets to draw five cards, discard one, and to draw one. I get one stud. And how a posse works is, you pick. Your shooter. So, Tommy's my shooter. Um, I could have picked... Uh, it would have been better to pick Travis, but I, I made a mistake. Um, I picked Tommy. Tommy is one stud, so I'm me drawing six cards. Um, then, Travis, since he's not the main shooter, he's a backup. He's part of my posse. He's the or offering support. He just offers one of the type of bullet so instead of getting two draw I only get one so I'm gonna be drawing six cards discarding one drawing I could up to discard up to one and then draw one if I would have made Travis my shooter then I would have discarded I could discard two to draw two and then the plus one of the stud would have still given me a hand size of six so so here we go we're going to draw. So I get two, three, four, five, six. So those are my six. Uh, then I'm going to use the draw to discard a railroad station and flip another card. So right here, I have a full house. So I got three aces and two twos. Um, so I'll be discarding the because I have to go back to a legal hand, to a five card hand. So I'll discard um, the nine of uh, spades. So that will give me an ace of clubs, ace of clubs, two of clubs, two of spades, and ace of spades. All right. So what I got before my draws is four of a kind. But you know what? Sometimes miracles do happen. Was so, there than a four of a kind? Let's try and get a five of a kind. Ah, uh, no five of a kind. Okay. But still four of a kind. So, I have a cheating hand because I have two clubs of a ace of clubs. Josh has a more... <laughs> uh, only a slightly cheating hand. So, he has three four clubs. So, I could trigger Phillips's Seinford's ability, but that card is very good. So, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to trigger his ability. Um... I am going to trigger the six shooters ability. It says cheating resolution. Um, 
Once we flip our cards of poker, there's a resolution phase. And then anything that says resolution can be played during there. But it says cheating resolution, so there has to be a cheating involved, which Josh is. And resolution, so I'll boot it. It says change one card in your draw hand, that is this, to change the suit and value of your choice. So I'll make this the ace of diamonds, diamonds or, or, or hearts, anyway. That will make my hand a legal hand. Then I'm going to trigger uh, Tommy's ability, which states, if your opponent at the Tommy shootout reveals a cheating hand, which Josh did, um, raise your draw hand rank by one for this round. If your draw hand is also legal, which it is, raise your hand rank by two instead. So, well, so we look over here. Is I have a four of a kind. I have a rank of eight. eight. Your full house... To is rank seven. seven. So mine's going to be raised by two. So that means mine's a nine. And against so, Josh's eight. So that means I lost the shootout. Okay, so how this works is by the difference of ranks. So the difference is a one. Josh has to have a, a casualties. To satisfy the difference of... Um, to the, if he discards a guy, it satisfies one point. If he aces a dude, it satisfies two points. Okay? Um, since it's only one point difference, he just discards a guy. The difference between discarding and acing is discarding goes to the discard pile, and then whenever his uh, deck gets um, emptied, he gets to reshuffle it. Acing a dude is permanently removed from the game. It called, they go to, it's called Boot Hill in the game. So he's removed, and you cannot play no other copies of him. He's um, D E A D dead. Um, All right. And so, because Silas was discarded, the bounty that was on him is being collected by the law dogs. So he gets that credit for being wanted. Okay. So all this goes back in the discard. So, after I cleaned the general store of filth, it's, uh, it's your go. It's my turn. So, I am going to move Philip to Town Square. Since I have already the general store, you know, covered. Since I kind of need to put some control points on the table in order to stay competitive here, I'm going to pay two Ghost Rock. Put out Carter's bounties. <coughs> okay. Um, Carter's bounties. It's uh, two costs to play. One income. It's a private location. Controller. Shootout. Boot. Move your dudes into your posse from any location. Very strong. Mm -hmm. So. Philip sees this rackus that's happening in that side of town and says, you know, that Carter's bounty, you know, needs to be taken into the fold of the law. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go check those papers and make sure they're, they're, they're legit. So he's going to go over to Carter's bounty. All right. Well, can't just let you have said bounties, so... Mr. Clint Ramsey is going to make sure you don't do any tomfoolery around here. So it's my turn. Um, I'm just here, you know, as, as the officer of the law, just making sure, you know, the papers and the codes are, are, are right, you know. Uh, but, you know, if Clint's going to get all mouthy, I'm going to, you know, call him out. So you're calling out Clint? See, dude, this... To just come out and, 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 you know, make sure that things legal. Yeah, well, it's not legal because it's private property, man. Since I... So... I get do that. a bounty. Phillips, you know. This bounty from the slow gangs. Who cares about the slow gangs? And Allie, who was at home, is going to come over and help Mr. Clint. Because she's a little expendable. But I'm not going to tell her that to her <laughs> face. Um, 
So we start the shootout. I don't... Um, I could have Prescott go over there since... He, no, I can't. This is adjacent to Town Square. I don't have nobody in Town Square, so nobody can join my posse. So Philip is kind of um, on his own over there. Maybe it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a shootout is going to start. Um, I have a shootout action. I'm going to play The Stakes Just Rose. Shootout. Move one of your dudes into your posse. That dude becomes a stud. So I get to move Prescott over to f over there. And oh, he Mr. becomes Prescott. a stud. So Mr. Prescott's ability says, Prescott's bullets and influence are equal to the number of log dogs at this location. So there's two log dogs. He's a bullet two stud. He's a m the man. He's the law. Well... That's quite unfortunate. Um, but he's kind of an elderly folk. Uh, perhaps the sun was in his eyes, though. Oh. Which is a shootout uh, play. Choose a dude in this shootout. That dude gets minus two bullets and becomes a draw. Oh. So take away that silver bullet, make it bronze, and uh, take away two. two bullets, why don't you? That Mr. is... Mr. Mr. Utter. Prescott's days of glory kind of shrunk down pretty fast. So, it's my turn now. Uh, my influence is, Prescott's influence is two. Um, Phillips is, is one, so I have three influences. So he controls this. So I control that location. Josh's influence is only one because Annie doesn't give any influence. So I'm going to use that location. I'm going to tap it. And I'm going to move move a dude from any location to the posse. Tommy Harding is going to show up. Tommy's the law. And he just got finished taking care of one of you type of people. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> uh, the criminal type. Duh. And he's going to go and go over there and join the posse. Well, I don't have any other shootout abilities as I don't have a hand. No, me too. <laughs> <Can I? laughs> um, so let's pick our shooters, Mr. Lawman. I'll pick Tommy as my shooter. And Mr. Clint's going to be mine. So I'll be drawing six cards with the potential of draw discarding two. And I will be drawing seven because Clint's a two stud. And I'll have the opportunity of discarding one. So here I got Ace of Diamonds, Ace of uh, Clubs, Three of Diamonds, Three of Hearts, and Two um, Twos of Diamonds. So I get to discard two. So, you know. Not gonna um, say that uh, it's a coincidence, but um, criminals cheat a lot. So I'm gonna discard this. This makes my hand cheat, and hopefully, if he cheats again, that will help me trigger Tommy. So I'm gonna discard these two, and I'm hoping to get an ace or a three to make it a ha full house. Oh no! Should have kept the two twos. So I got two pairs. And you would take two I of would, the two most I would discard a two, yeah. so I'll be two pairs king high. Yeah. Okay, so All Josh right. is going to flip his. I got seven cards, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're showing these cards up front, but normally you keep them hidden, so he doesn't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So we got ourselves two pairs and a ting, 10 king and jack. I'm going to get rid of the king because he's. I, I know there's only one other king in my deck because there's only one other copy of Sloan. 
So no point in trying to search for another one there. Uh, so I discard one. I'll draw another one. Five. That's good. Um, but I know he has a good amount of cards that proc off of cheating. So I'm going to knock my... Uh, knock off these two whiskey flasks so that I still have a legal hand. That's not good for me. <laughs> so, we reveal. So here I was hoping he's cheating, and Josh predicted that. And um, so I have a two pairs, which is a rank three. Josh has three of a kind, which is a rank four. I can't proc none of my cheating. Uh, and um, that means I have to suffer one casualty. And I think the days... You killed my dog! That you, should be a bounty you, right you, there. You, you could have uh, you could have killed <laughs> Mr. Prescott over here, or mm -hmm. Philip, or anyone. You're the one who killed the dog. <laughs> so, this goes there. So we discard our draw hands, put them back there. So now... Uh, there's an option of you staying and shooting it out again because we both have a posse here. Or you could go run home like little doggies back to your back to your house. I think uh your papers are in order. <laughs> 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 and um, I don't want to lose none of my guys. So, I think I'm going to go back. Since, you know, you're uh, at the moment a legal citizen. <laughs> <laughs> so, all my guys got booted and they go back home. Alright, so that was a little bit awkward you know having the law come into your own place busting in bringing all their guns and stuff a dog gets shot accidentally and then they all run home we have to mourn blue tick with the very blue tick <laughs> hey he's not technically dead he just ran away yeah that's true <laughs> a, a bullet grazed somewhere near him and he scared and he arfed and ran away so that was, I'm the one that called the shootout, so it's your turn. Um, okay, so, um, so since I called the shootout, it's Jesus' turn to do something. Since I don't have no cards, all my guides, guys, uh, my dudes are booted. So, I don't have any action, sir. Well, fortunately for me... I see there's a piece uh, in I, the town, so you should just stay home. I, I, I still have Mr. Clint here and Miss Clementine uh, to do stuff. So, I'm going to take Miss Clementine out to the town square. I, like I said, you didn't listen to me? Uh, the, the town is peaceful. You should yes, stay everybody I'm at home. In, I'm securing the peace right now. There's no securing. I have it. It's under control, sir. Uh, I take it you're going to pass then? Uh, like I said, the town's under, <laughs> uh, under good. It's good. Um, I'm going to use my house ability, or my home ability, uh, which it says noon boot. I boot a dude who's in the town square. So I'm going to boot Miss Clementine. And if she's still in the town square at the down uh, sundown, sundown phase, I either gain a ghost rock per other person or my dude permanently gets one control point. If they don't have them. that is very good because that's what uh, since Josh doesn't have any deeds, all my guys are exhausted. I can't go out there and challenge her and, sh and make a shootout to get her out of town. So Mr. Clementine is just in the middle of town square, just yapping all the way, <laughs> saying how she owns the town. And if I don't stop that yapping, which I can't, 
people are going to believe her. You know, it feels like a politician right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, since you really don't have any more actions, I'm going to just move Mr. Clint over so to the... He would first move to this town square. Then I would go again. Oh my guy's exhausted. So now he sees an opportunity on my general store. Travis is just like, you know, in the store just chilling. He's like in a corner, just just letting me take over, you know, no big deal. So even though I have a dude at the general store, mm-hmm. Clint has one influence, I have zero. So Clint um so Josh takes control of the general okay. store. So he has one control point. The plus one only ever goes to the controller, to the owner of the uh, the um, deed, as long as I control it also. But I don't know control it, so Josh is doing two things. He's getting a control point and preventing me to get the plus one. Yep. So right now I have two control points. Um, two control points. So I'm done. You're passing? Yeah. I'll pass. So once both players pass, we go into the sh- um, sundown. That's when we check for wind condition. So Josh has, oh wait, terribly I'm, triggered. Yeah, I'm going to take the control point from her. So she would get a control point. Um, so Josh will have one, two, three control points. I have influence. One, two, press cut is equal to the amount of law dogs in the location. So he has three. So that's five. So Josh can't win. He needs to um, wear me down a little bit more. So if last, last, when that shootout that I went after the, uh, the uh, Carter's, bounties. Don't Carter's Bounty, if I would have stayed there and lost another one of my dudes. Pretty much if you lost card uh utter prescott is the yep. yeah prescott is the one keeping you in the game right now so if it would have lost, if, if lost two dudes if he would have beat me by two ranks no i have at least for three ranks um if it would have been over three ranks i would have to lose two dudes and i think that would have been um, game mm-hmm. so that's one of the reasons why i kind of retreated um so in my case i have zero control points <laughs> I guess Josh is three. Three. So Josh has nowhere close of losing. Um, Unfortunately, though, the log dogs are still in the game. So we they live to see another day. So we go at the end of the uh, end of sunrise when we um, untap. Um. If you had cards in your hand, you could discard one card. Unfortunately, we don't. Know. We, don't. we draw back up to five. Then we will be doing another low ball. Low ball. I have a uh, king high. Uh, unfortunately, I have a uh, two pair or a, a pair. A pair, and his land, his hand is legal. So, so I, we would have anti. Uh, I would have got one. Yep, this would have gone, and we would have done another whole face. Um, we're not um, for the length of the video because of the how long the video is, mm-hmm. but my strategy for the second round would be to try to take back my my general store. Hopefully. Taking him with me, because mm-hmm. um, he is his biggest dude. Um, once I had that cleared, I would have to try to get rid of um, Clementine because that plus one permanent is kind of, kind of good. Mm-hmm. Because if somehow I could get rid of her, because if not, he could go back into his hometown and just have her sit there um, with a control point that I cannot touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you cannot do shootouts at your hometown. Oh, um, uh, enemies cannot call a shootout in the yeah, hometown. Yeah. They, you can still call a shootout yeah. in your uh, home. So, um, and if I, depending how the situation would have been, I would then try to go after Carter's bounty again. Um, what would your strategy would be for the second round? Um, 
I would probably have uh, tried, got a saloon out, uh, got Clementine back into the saloon because her ability, she increases her influence and can't be called out uh, while in a saloon I own. So rather than having her at home not controlling anything, I'd have her contest a saloon at home and she's fairly safe. Yeah. Uh, forcing you to either try to control that deed, which would allow me to try and exploit some of the weaknesses throughout the board. Yeah. And um, for play, I would have got three gold, three uh, ghost rocks. I would have paid one upkeep for uh, Prescott. And I would have played the Gomorrah Parish. Um, and... That would have been three. And then yeah, I could ace a card from my hand to gain a ghost rock. And I would have, uh, once I took back control of the general store, um, I found blue tick again. <laughs> there he is. Um, so, and I drew Adam Abraham. Mm -hmm. um, he's good. He's good against, uh, if I have a holy deed. Oh, I do now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good. Then I don't think this turn, but then next turn I will try to play Abraham to guard the parish. He has an ability. It says uh, noon job, mark a holy ground deed, which is what this is. If successful, um, discard all abominations and want to do it at that deed. Ooh, that's good. So that was very good. Um, so guys. That was one round. That's one day in the life of Gamora. Yep, one day in Doomtown, you know. Um, so the game keeps going until you meet the the, the uh, requirement, the of, win the condition. Yep. Um, one thing with the game is if you go very gun ho, it could pretty end very fast. Um, like, like I, like you guys witnessed. If I would have stayed here, and then Josh would have got a, a very good hand again uh, against me, I could easily lost that turn. So, um, you could play it safe, play the long game, or go all in and lose it all in one go. Yep, just like in poker. So, um, hopefully you guys like this. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Like, subscribe, uh, comment if you would like to see more Doomtown games. We plan on doing a few recordings. Uh, we are going to do some tournaments as soon as the uh, comes out September 8th. Um, and right after that, we'll hopefully do a couple of tournaments and we'll have some recordings and commentaries on it. So, um, anything else, Josh? No, just made a wind beat at your back. <laughs> and not the sun in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us, guys. Have a good one. Bye.